Calaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. One of Megan's bridesmaids from her first wedding explained why she and Megan are no longer friends. Nanaki Pretty and Megan's friendship, which blossomed from their first meeting at age two, took a significant hit following Megan's divorce from Trevor Engelson. Despite their long history, including Pretty serving as Megan's maid of honor at her wedding to Engelson in Jamaica 2011, the relationship fractured irreparably after Megan and Engelson's split in 2013. Pretty has been vocal about her disapproval of how Megan ended her marriage with Engelson, leading to their estrangement. What came to light after Trevor and I spoke ended my friendship with Megan. I think everybody who knew them both was in shock. Pretty disclosed to the Daily Mail, indicating a conversation with Engelson a month post-divorce filing that shifted her perspective on Megan. Pretty felt Megan did not give Engelson a fair chance to mend their marriage, despite his desire to do so. Further, Pretty observed a change in Megan following her rise to fame with her role as Rachel Zane in Suits. She recounted how Megan became more guarded and prioritized her time differently, often expecting friends to be available at her convenience. Her time became increasingly important when she was in town. She'd want you to drop everything to see her. If I was busy, it would be, why don't you want to see me, Pretty shared, highlighting the strain this put on their friendship. The transition into the Suits cast and gaining a new circle of friends marked the decline of their communication. Pretty lamented the loss of the friend she grew up with, describing Megan's eventual coldness as a shutdown mechanism, reflecting on the end of their friendship, Pretty expressed. It was like a death. I mourned it for quite a while. Even now, I'll pass by a magazine stand and see a face staring out at me that was such a big part of my life. Royal author Angela Levin told The Sun that Americans are getting tired of Megan and Harry bashing the royals. Levin said, I think endless moaning puts off Americans because they like people who are go-getters rather than those who blame everyone else. They also don't like the attacks on the royal family, especially as they so loved and admired the Queen. Nor do Americans like their hypocrisy as seen in South Park. They say they want privacy, but they keep appearing at Z-level awards just to get their pictures. By wanting revenge, they have thrown their changes down the drain with no coming back. Meanwhile, PR expert Renee Smith had some advice for Meghan if she plans to return to the UK. Smith told The Express, From a PR perspective, Meghan Markle's return to the UK after previously stating she might never do so could be seen as a significant move. Whether it's deemed good for the Duchess hinges on several factors, including the narrative surrounding her return and how it's managed both by her team and the media. The British public's reception to Meghan's return would likely vary widely. Public opinion is influenced by media portrayal, past events, and the reasons cited for her visit. A well-managed return focusing on charitable work, family reconciliation, or a positive unifying event could help improve her standing with the public. I think Meghan is quite polarizing here in the UK, and she will either garner support or criticism, dependent on how her PR team rolls the whole thing out. PR expert Lynn Carrot told The Express that Megan would restart her Instagram. She can leverage the media as a platform to promote her work instead of giving explosive interviews about her time in the royal family, which might attract juicy gossip. Also, opening up on her Instagram account and showing the public what life is really like behind the scenes instead of the polished front she puts on would make her more relatable. Taking these values on board can help Megan endear herself to the UK public. Carrot also suggests Meghan downplay the royal stuff. To become more relatable to the British public, Meghan can consider toning down her use of designer labels and opting for frugal options like Kate. Showing herself as a normal working mum who is facing the same challenges as others would also help. Deep Crown, ever the source of candid royal insights, didn't hold back when it came to Meghan Markle's relationship with the UK. Honestly, the incessant speculation about whether Meghan will grace our shores again is like a record stuck on repeat, and not a particularly good one at that. She clearly has no desire to return, and frankly, the royal family seems to be in no hurry to roll out the red carpet. So why do we persist with this narrative? It's a non-starter, a moot point. Let's focus on matters that actually have a chance of coming to fruition. The endless back and forth benefits no one. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Royal biographer Tom Bauer delves into the complexities of Meghan Markle's time with the royal family in his book, Revenge, Meghan, Harry and the War Between the Windsors. Bauer suggests the late Queen expressed relief upon learning Meghan would not attend Prince Philip's funeral due to Meghan's pregnancy at the time. 
Thank goodness Elizabeth reportedly remarked to her aides. Bauer also touches on the tensions surrounding Harry and Meghan's desire for a visible presence alongside the Queen during her Platinum Jubilee celebrations, a request that was ultimately denied. According to Bauer, Meghan was particularly dissatisfied with the decision, believing it affected her standing with Netflix, where being seen near the Queen would have been advantageous. The author further claims the Sussexes had an obsession with monitoring social media feedback during their royal tenure, leading to significant distress. He recounts an incident where Meghan reportedly reacted dramatically to Harry's internet browsing, searching for negative comments, according to one report. Meghan allegedly threw a cup of tea into the air, Tom wrote. Moreover, Bauer sheds light on the restrictions imposed on Meghan's involvement in her final season of the TV show Suits. He notes that the show's creator, Aaron Korsh, was instructed to have all scripts approved by Meghan's agent and then by Kensington Palace, leading to modifications being sent from the palace to Los Angeles. Particularly stringent was the directive regarding Meghan's appearance in a wedding scene, with the palace mandating that no photographs of Meghan in a wedding dress can be circulated and that she was to be covered with a jacket between takes, emphasizing the control exerted over her public image even during her acting career. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or your app of choice, and leave a review if you love the show. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and Good Times. <laughs>